Hello guys and welcome to Free Birds Crew and uh, in this video I will tell you about the interview questions in statistics that are most asked in the Google, Microsoft and many product based companies. So in our past videos I already uh, told you the interview questions in uh, machine learning in EDA as well. So please subscribe our YouTube channel and uh, let's start this video with all the interview questions. Our first interview question is what is p-value and how it is used in hypothesis testing. So p-value is the probability of a statistical measure such as a, a mean, standard deviation or any probability distribution that would be greater than or equal to the observed results. Okay, so here if you see this kind of a graph, so if my p-value is 0 0.05 and my observed data point comes between or under this p value range then it is ac acceptable either it, it it would be rejected okay so if you want to know more about the p value and hypothesis testing as well you can watch my this video on the hypothesis testing in this video i'll explain the complete sense about hypothesis testing as well the video link is in the description please watch okay so now our next interview question is what is population and sample? So the population actually includes all the possible individuals and observation of interest while the sample is just a subset of the population. Okay, because we make every inference, every statistical test on the sample only. You can't like take whole population and start doing the uh, statistical test on the whole population. That's why it is important to know what is sample and what is population in the statistics okay guys no okay. so our next interview question is what is central limit theorem it is the most asked interview question because central limit theorem states that the distribution of the sample mean approaches a normal distribution as soon as its sides guess increase regardless of the shape of the population distribution so if you see this kind of a graph here the population distribution is actually look like this but if we just take out a small small sample from this uh, population and start building a plot of all those sample means it looks like a normal distribution okay we use the central limit theorem because it allows us to make the inferences about the population parameters okay we can do all kind of our statistical test that assumes that the a uh, sample distribution or the population distribution for follows a normal distribution okay that's why we use the central limit theorem because it allows us to do all kind of statistical test on the normal distribution okay guys okay so our next interview question is what is the difference between type 1 and type 2 errors okay so the type 1 error occurs when we reject a true null hypothesis it is very similar to the false negatives in the classification models or classification report that we use in the machine learning. And type 2 errors occur when we fail to reject the false null hypothesis or we accept the false null hypothesis. It is similar to the false positive in the classification report. And if you see this kind of a chart here, it shows that when the type 1 error occur and when the type 2 error occur. It is basically uh, like a very similar kind to the precision and and uh, uh, recall you need to make a trade-off between both of them okay so our next interview question is what is a b testing and how do you design a b test it is also the most asked interview question as well because a b testing is a statistical method used to compare two versions of a variable to determine which is better okay to design a a b test we first define the hypothesis then randomize the subject into the groups as expose them to uh, different versions and analyze the results simultaneously. Okay, so if you just like uh, build uh, two different designs of a website and you want to know which des design can have more customer clicks or more customer uh, visitations as well. So this is where you can apply the A-B testing. If you see this kind of uh, uh, analysis here, it shows that my website design A has 21% conversion rate while my website B 
has 38% conversion rate. So I will choose the layout of the website B because it has more conversion rates. Oh guys, okay. So our next interview question is what is one tail test and what is two tail test? So one tail test actually checks for the statistical significance only in one direction. Either it would be greater than or either it would be less than. While the two tail test actually checks for the significance in both of the directions. So if you see this graph of one tail, we, we can see the critical region is 0 0.05 that is under this area. You can take this uh, critical region in the left side as well and or in the right side as well. But it, it, it would always be 0 0.05 or any kind of uh, uh, significance level that you want. But in the two tail test, we have to uh, divide our significance value by two. If you take 0 0.05, then it will be divided into two parts, 0 0.025 on the left side and 0 0.025 on the right side as well. Okay, so in that way, you can uh, perform the two tail test. So if your value falls under this area, only then you can reject the null hypothesis, else you are not able to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, guys? Okay, so the next uh, interview question is, what is the law of large numbers? Okay, so the law of large numbers actually states that when the sample size increases, the sample mean converges to the population mean. Okay, it is similar to the central limit theorem, but the difference occurs as it follows the mean and the central limit theorem follows the distribution principle. It ensures the reliability of statistical inference as the sample size grows. Okay, for ex example, in the law of large numbers, if you flip a coin many times, the average portion of heads will converge to 0.5, the true probability of heads. Okay, if you just flip a coin uh, only four times, then the number of heads will come only one time, then the uh, probability of heads would be 25%. But as soon as the number of tosses get increased, the probability of heads, which is actually 50% in a coin, it reaches to the that probability easily. Okay, so this is actually the law of large numbers. Okay, so our next uh, interview question is, what is the purpose of confidence interval? So a confidence interval is actually the uh, estimate plus and minus the variation in the estimate. So it actually a range, range value that, uh, that you can expect your estimated value will fall in between that range with a certain level of confidence. Okay, confidence in statistics is actually called the probability. So a 95 confidence interval for a mean salary is 50,000 to 55,000 dollars that indicate we are 95% confident that the true mean, the true mean salary will fall between this range only. Okay, you can see this kind of a graph as well. So this is actually the 95% confidence area where you, uh, you can say that my salary will fall between this area with 95% probability. Okay, guys. okay, so the next interview question is, how do you perform a t-test? So a t-test is a statistical test used to compare the means. It actually compare the means of two groups. It is commonly used to a test whether there is a significant difference between the means of two dif different groups or two different treatments. You can do that test by using the pair t-test, independent sample t-test or one t-test. In all the ways, it compares the mean with some kind of other mean as well. Okay, oh guys. Okay. Our next uh, interview co question is: How do you interpret a regression model? So, when I, whenever you build a regression model, you get a linear equ equation as well. So, you want to uh, interpret that linear e equation. So, I have a, like example here. We want to predict the price of a house based on the square footage of the house and the number of bedrooms. And we want to build a regression model and got the following results and or, or following equation that uh, 1 lakh plus 100 into square footage and 500 into bed bedrooms. We have 1 lakh as our intercept and 100 and 5000 add as our uh, coefficients and square footage and bedrooms as our 
independent variables so if you want to interpret that it shows that the intercept of 1 lakh tells us that when the square footage and the number of bedrooms are both equal to 0 the predicted house is of 1 lakh dollars the coefficient of 100 for square footage tells us that every one square foot increases the house price increase by the 100 dollars the coefficient of bedrooms will say th- say that if one bedroom increase in the house the price of the house will increase by 5000 dollars okay so in that way you can interpret this linear regression e- e- uh, equation as well okay guys okay that's it guys uh, that's it from my side as well i hope you guys uh, completely understand all the statistical concept that, that i explained in this video and uh, if you want to know about the uh, machine learning ac- algorithms try, try to learn more in depth with the project as well you can watch my this playlist and uh, if you want to guys know about uh, the different different kind of technologies like uh, gen- generative ai machine learning feature engineering you can check out my blogs on the medium as as well and uh, we will meet in our uh, next video in which i will tell you about the interview questions on deep learning so we'll meet in our next video guys thank you thank you so much